We're so excited in our new series shooting here for Channel 25, and we've provided some fantastic guests in wonderful locations. And how excited are we to be here uh, back with Matt Lamb? Uh, so Matt, again, what a fantastic story that you have, and you're a painter, and you're so involved in painting. But as you had said that previously, you were a funeral home director and involved in all of these businesses, and then you um, had a bad diagnosis uh, regarding your health, and then you decided to get into painting. Can you tell us more about how important that was and uh, how you truly came to that decision to go to the next step? My wife Rose and I have been partners and friends and married for uh, about 55 years married, but our mothers were the best of friends, so they were pregnant together. I went to her second uh, birthday party so we, we really met in the womb. And um, so we're almost, she could always finish my sentences and I could finish hers. So after I was told that I was going to be one of my customers in the funeral business, I decided I didn't want to die as a funeral director. I wanted to die teaching people what I learned as a funeral director. That really, there's really only one issue, and that's love. Um, Unfulfilled wishes, unfulfilled dreams. I wish I would have done that. I wish I would have done that. And I thought the best media is uh, painting because we all look at something and we all see something different. So my wife and I went to Taos, New Mexico, where we always went to work on our problems. The big rift there, I believe all my spirits live there. So I said to Rose, if I beat this, I'm going to sell everything and I'm going to paint for world peace and for to teach what I've learned as an undertaker. So she made the classic statement, not only lost your health, you lost your mind. You have never painted anything in your life. You know, how are you gonna do this? I said, I have no idea. I'm just, but I know that, that the spirit which guides everything in the world, which I really believe in, will, I will be the arms and the legs. I don't know what I'm gonna do, because I've never done anything, therefore I'm unencumbered about what I can do. I don't want to know the rules, I don't want to know the regulations, I don't want to know the culture. I want to do an archaeological dig inside of me. Welcome to the David Leonardis Gallery, 1346 North Polina Street here in Chicago's Wicker Park. We carry contemporary art, pop art, folk art, photography, and a collection of late 19th, early 20th century French lithographs. Next to me is a Matt Lamb painting. While in Dubai, similar paintings sold for $80 a square inch. That would make it $350,000. Here in Chicago, I'll sell to you for $17.50 a square inch, $75,000. It looks great in your house. Give me a call and we'll see you on Polina Street. Hi, I'm David Leonardis. When I need an attorney, I call Sandy Isaacson, the Bulldog. He gets it done. He's available 24-7, family law, corporate law, divorce, custody, contract negotiation. You need an attorney who gets the job done. My attorney gets it done. He's the Bulldog, Sandy Isaacson. Call him today. All right, more with Matt Lamb. Now, Matt, um, something that I want to talk to you about and uh, that um, I'm, you know, it, it's like you're talking about the art. The art is really, it's your baby, but then as an art dealer, you know, after I've collected the art and I have it in my home, I, I feel like it's kind of my baby. And then, of course, uh, like with children, not that I have any, but the children influence you even though that you give them out. Um, the images that uh, I see in a lot of the paintings that you have, and I know sometimes you also work exclusively abstract, um, but you have these different series of images that I've sort of seen um, uh, repeated in different works. And are those images, and this is just full of you, sir, are those images at all out of the spirits of the dead people that are involved, uh, you know, that, that were around you while you were a mortician? Possibly. Um, the spirits manifest themselves in many different ways. They usually come to me in dreams and make suggestions about what I should be doing or shouldn't be doing. It sounds very bizarre, but um, 
being a funeral director is so bizarre anyway, because every day you wake up to reality that this is it. This is, you know, this isn't a dress rehearsal. This is all you have. And so if something is trying to get through to you, you know, maybe it's all BS, but maybe it isn't. Maybe you better listen, maybe you better at, at least say there's a possibility that something is happening and uh, if it's an archaeological dig within myself, then I would say, oh, I'm not going to dig anymore. You know, this is mud, this is crap, there's nothing to it. I don't think, in my case, it is. Uh, reality is perception and perception is reality. So um, to a lot of people, I'm crazy. That's fine, I don't care. A lot of people, I'm a sage. I don't care that either. The only thing I really care about is being true to who and what I am. If I'm a painter, I don't want to be Picasso. I don't want to be Moreau or anybody else. I want to be the best man lamb I can be. And that means I have to look at myself with all my work. I'm a recovered alcoholic. As a recovered alcoholic, the last one that knows you're an alcoholic is you. Well, I'm not an alcoholic. Well, why are you laying on the ground puking? Well, you know, maybe you are. Who knew you were? And I smoked five packs of cigarettes a day. That's crazy. No wonder I was dying. So, the realization of who and what you are is an archaeological dig inside of yourself. Come on out to the Howard Finster Vision House Museum. We're located in Somerville, Georgia, an hour and a half north of Atlanta, 45 miles south of Chattanooga, 644 miles away from the David Leonardis Gallery, Chicago. I've got 300 pieces of art in my old friend's home. He had a vision from God to paint sacred art. There's a ghost there. You can stay in our bed and breakfast. Come on out and we'll see you in Northwest Georgia. Once again, I hope you enjoy those commercials, but we're back here with Matt Lamb, and uh, each segment is um, its a new realization. So just a couple of questions. You said that sometimes people think that you're crazy, and sometimes people think you're a sage, and you said that you don't really care what they think, but do you think you're crazy or a sage? I don't, uh, I, I do a lot of meditation about where I'm going, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Uh, what the general opinion is doesn't really bother me. Uh, Your opinion, sir? Well, my own opinion is, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That's my favorite quote of all of the world. My opinion is, it is what it is. I do what I do because I do it and because I like to do it. But then I'm my biggest critic. I look at it and I think, every painting that I look at before I sign it, I think, if this goes to the Louvre, Am I going to be happy? Is it going to represent who I am, what I'm trying to do? Is that name, does that mean something to me? And if it doesn't, I don't sign it. But then when I sign it and I look at it, I say, you know what? If you can't do better than that, you better take up tap dancing. I'm constantly, I'm on a voyage. I'm a pilgrim. I have no idea where I'm going, and I really don't care. I know I'm going this way. I know what my mantra is. I'm trying to change the world through art because I look at art as a tool where I work with every different culture, every different religion. And it has to be open to all interpretations. So how do you feel about the national health care? And are you for it or against it? And why or why not? And do you have health care? I'm a senior citizen, so I do have Medicare. I think that um, it's a very complex situation. I think so many things are made political instead of realistic. I believe that if uh, a country is economically strong, to leave anybody out is a mistake. I think that we should take care of the poorest of the poor. I don't think anybody should get a free ride if they can afford to do something. On the other hand, you can say, well, Medicare, billionaires are getting their free. We haven't really come to grips in our society. My whole mission is stopping killing each other because July 16, 1945, our species invented the atomic bomb. We could blow up the whole world. Hello, 
out there, David Leonardis here. I'd like to tell you about a great opportunity. David Leonardis Productions offers high quality TV commercials at a very reasonable price. Our experienced professionals will work with you to put you at ease and make sure you get a commercial that you will love. What better way to advertise and promote your business than with a TV commercial? Forget about it. Call David Leonardis Productions today and put your business on the cutting edge. We'd love to sell you some art and uh, production and tell you about art in our commercials. But over here on uh, Chit Chat with David Lee and Artists, we're really concerned with these serious issues. And off camera, we started talking a little politics with Matt Lamb. And I kind of want to get back uh, to what we were talking about. Um, we were saying how, you know, I'm very much in favor of the national health care and that um, I think it's just what's right is right. And how are you thinking that uh, some of the ways that we can overcome our philosophical differences, sir? Well, first we have to get past them and us. We have a government which is democratic, by the people, for the people, and of the people, shall not perish from the earth. I go to many, I've been in a number of shooting revolutions. When it's all over, there are a lot of people dead. Now, oh, we have a consensus. Hitler threw all the people in the oven. Now all the, everything is, is over. Well, it's not. We live in a democracy, which means we, we, me, you, everybody out there, you have a responsibility of finding out what the hell's going on and why. And do your representatives, the people you elect, really by the people, for the people, of the people? Is that what this is about? Or is it about something else? And if it's about something else, and you don't agree with it, maybe you should go out and punch some doorbells. I run political campaigns. I was campaign managers. My wife and I were threatened you know, a lot of times. It's part of it. If you live in a democracy and you really and truly believe you have a vote, well then don't bitch about it when somebody gets in and you haven't voted, and you say, oh, that's not what I want. Well, what do you want? Go and do it. Talk is cheap. Get out, walk around, get your folders, get your literature, get involved. If people don't like it, well, that's what a democracy is. But we're all alive at the end. A democracy means we are in charge. When we do, are not in charge, then we do not have a democracy. Believe me. I go into places where people couldn't say shit if they had a mouthful. Why? Because they'll get killed. That doesn't happen with her. So if you're complaining, maybe you're not doing anything. Stop complaining. People, ooh, look at all this. What about, I mean, look, what about the Tea Party? What about the Democrats? What about the Republicans? What about the Independents? What about, blah, blah, blah. what about it? What are you doing? Oh, I'm sitting here saying, what, what? Hi, I'm Maureen at Sit Close Tickets. We can get you tickets to the best events around the world. Come visit us two blocks north of Wrigley Field at 3761 North Racine. Give us a call at 773-435-2020 or visit us online at sitclose.com. And I'll see you in the front row. All right, thanks again. We got a little political that last time, but I had to get it out. And uh, Matt and I were talking about that. Uh, um, off camera and it's good to get it out and exactly um, to you know say what you mean and mean what you say and that's at least where I'm at with it all right we're gonna segue differently Cubs or Sox why I've never been to a baseball game I was born in the shadows of, of Sox Park I don't know it just doesn't intrigue me to I always say watching baseball is like watching paint dry. I know that's that's a no-no, but you know, it's reality for me. Um, I have my doubts on anything where 100,000 people can stand and put their hand in the rope and say they're number one because somebody took a piece of wood and hit something over a fence. That makes me number one. I think you're number one if you stand up for something you really and truly believe in, where you might get your ass kicked for being for saying something. But I know that that's 
that's against the culture, it's against all of that stuff. But um, yeah, I'm, I walk my solitary road, and uh, in many cases it's very solitary. And uh, I, you know, I could lie to you and say, oh, yes, I was born at 31st and Union, I could walk over to Sox Park, the Kaminsky's, and all I give you a lot of bullshit. It would be a lot of bullshit. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we appreciate your honesty. I had heard that they um, created sports to keep our mind off of politics. And uh, the one thing that I've noticed, and Matt, I'm a huge baseball fan. Um, I'll be going to the Cubs game later tonight. Uh, last year I went to 43 Cubs home games. This year I'm going to 45 Cubs home games. And um, But there's a certain camaraderie. And uh, I find that when I get to the park and for me, I always walk down Addison uh, to the park, and right then, that feeling of relaxation and um, putting aside the you know trials and tribulations that are going on start to go away at least for those three hours. So that's what I find in it. And um, in Chicago, you know, again, you know, you say you're down there at 31st and Union. Um, there is a lot of action, interaction, and it's mostly negative between the Cubs and Sox fans. And I bring this up and want to talk about it because I'm a Cubs fan and I don't hate Sox fans, but I fully do not feel that that's the case. And I've found so many Sox fans are just more concerned with uh, the Cubs losing than with their own team. But moreover, they're just they're they're kind of you know beating you down for being a Cubs fan, so that's an issue that um, uh, is poignant to me, and that's why I talk about it. So I appreciate your honesty about not caring about it, but uh, we've definitely um, just only scratched the surface on that topic. So well, I'd like to say something about. I don't think we have to be number one by having somebody else number two. I think that um, being the, is being the best. And that doesn't mean that somebody has to be, but there's a great, uh, in the Grinch, when they told him that he, that when he, he won, they said, oh, then there must be losers. I mean, he was, took so much delight in saying there's losers, not winners. So, you know, is that the human condition? I don't think so. I think we should, we should honor everybody. I don't care if people spend their whole lives. The same thing that you articulated about going down to a game, I kept going into my studio. Right. When I look at all these paintings, they're talking to me. People think that's crazy. You know, you know maybe I think hitting a, uh, taking a stick and hitting a ball is crazy. It's immaterial. If it makes you feel good, do it. You know, unless it's hurting somebody. I don't think it's hurting anybody. One way, me working in my studio or somebody going to a ball game. Great. 100 million of them, great. It's better than going out and right and beat the shit out of everybody. Although sometimes when you get the sports going on, uh, the riots happen. When the Bulls won their last championship, I was out, I came back, my neighbors uh, were all, um, and, well, I like to describe it as they were gangbanging, and uh, they had stolen my van, and it was later found burned. <laughs> a sacrificial van. <laughs> yeah, well that was my Toyota van at the time. So Toyota, if you're out there, feel free to send me another van. I sure could use it. And um, I, our, I don't want to be the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> oh, the sacrificial I'm not even sure I caught that. Funny, funny, funny uh, stuff. We add a little humor to go with uh, the seriousness and... Um, I think that we talk about these serious subjects so we can get back to the humor. So um, here's a question for you. Let's get right into it. Now you're a self-taught painter. You're extremely prolific. And um, do you consider yourself an outsider artist? And 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 why or why not? And then and then after that we'll ask what the New York Times has to say about it. And uh, Sanford L. Smith with the uh, Outsider Art Fair in New York. Well, I'm probably not an outsider artist because I was thrown out of the outsider art fair because um, I don't know why. I had too much money or something. I'd just like to interject. 
I was thrown out of the same outsider art fair. I don't know if you know this, I talked to your daughter Sheila about it, and uh, I had consigned some art to another gallery, and so I wasn't actually exhibiting, and I was consigning the art, and the guy threw me out. So, um, so this is something that I'm familiar uh, ground uh, myself, and I thought that these people are just so uptight, and then my next uh, question is going to be about Carl Hammer and what his problem is, but let's go back to uh, outsider art. Well, anyway, um, I think um, Crotcher and Mark had a great, you know, I wouldn't belong to a club that would have me. So they wouldn't have me, and uh, I'd look at that as sort of a, probably a great thing. Um, not that I, I love the people who are there, and uh, I love the galleries that I had, and, and all of that. But I hate labels. I hate them with a passion. If there's anything I really hate, it's a label. Let's put a label on somebody. Boop, boop. And now, this, now it's so easy. Ooh, look at that person. It's like branding somebody. Boop, mm -hmm. you're a slave. Uh, it's crazy. Do you I, feel I, that you were being branded a slave when you were being branded an outsider artist? Or was that brand really an opportunity to reach out for more art or uh, art exposure? Or do you feel that you were limited then by that outsider art status? I'm never limited by other people's opinion of what I do. I don't do anything to limit myself because what will they say? They do not exist, and if they do, I don't give a shit what they say. It's immaterial to me. So what do I think? Am I doing the very best that I possibly can? Can I continue to kid myself? No. Not if you, if you start really agitating yourself. Oh, you know, now the, the king has no clothes. The king can do anything. That's a crazy, it's crazy. <coughs> so let's get labels and put them all on everybody. Then we don't have to think about anything at all. There's a Republican, there's a Democrat, there's an Independent. Here's a black, here's a white, here's a straight. Here's a, look, 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 look. I can't keep them all straight in my head. Give me a label. Welcome to the David Leonardo's Gallery. 1346 North Polina Street here in Chicago's Wicker Park. We carry contemporary art, pop art, folk art, photography, and a collection of late 19th, early 20th century French lithographs. Next to me is a Matt Lamb painting. While in Dubai, similar paintings sold for $80 a square inch. That would make it $350,000. Here in Chicago, I'll sell it to you for $17.50 a square inch 75,000, it looks great in your house. Give me a call and we'll see you on Polina Street. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, it, what I like to say is, is if I offended anybody, I'm sorry, but I figure if you can't laugh at yourself, then what's the point? All right, we'll see you next time.
Hi, this is Dan Shields, owner of Jetty Security and Jetty Investigations. Do you have the need for security for a private event or need some questions answered about someone? Give us a call. 773-341-6030 or look us up on the web, www.jettysecurity.com.